This equation, this expression should be familiar to us. We've seen it used a lot. Yes, it's called difference quotient, but what is it actually used to find? Yes, this is used to find the slope of a secant line to the curve. So remember the secant line is going through two points on the curve and it's just that line that connects through those two points. All right, now combining our difference quotient work with the work that we are doing just the last week or two, what would the limit as h approaches zero of the difference quotient actually tell us? What would that represent? Now, some of us might start seeing kind of maybe what this could mean for us, but really I think we need to do a little bit of trial, a little bit of work to see what that's going to be. So we are going to actually evaluate what this limit would equal for a whole bunch of different expressions. Here's 12 different expressions. And we are going to find the limit as h approaches 0 of the difference quotient for every single one of these. The good news is there's a bunch of us here, and so we don't necessarily have to do every single one of these ourselves. We're going to divide up the work a little bit. So starting with your birth month, so like let's say that you were born in, I don't know, February. Oops, wrong one. If you're born in February, then you would start here in the second one. If you were born in June, you'd start with the six. Start with the one that is your birth month. Find the value of the limit as h approaches zero of the difference quotient for that. And then once you find that value, go on to the next and keep going until I tell you to stop. We're, you should be able to get through a couple of them at least here so we get lots of data points from the whole group here. <laughs> now just to make sure that you're kind of in the right track, here's what your work might have looked like for doing the second one, the 2x plus 7. So if that's where you had started, this is what your work would have looked like. You'll notice that in this case, I ended up with 2h over h, and then the h is canceled out, and so then I was just find the limit as h approach 0 of 2. Now, for some people, this messes with your head a little bit, because it's like, well, there is no h for me to plug into. That's right, so it's always 2. And so that limit would just equal 2 in that case. So for that first one, the answer is 2. And so make sure you got that one, and again, you would go on to the next one after figuring that out. And in fact, after you've done a few of these, maybe you could tell me what they all equal. So we worked through that one, and we found out that that was a 2. Uh, for the one below that, what would our limit equal? 3. What would the limit of the one below that equal? 4. Yeah, you figured it out, right? You notice the pattern here. But the question is, what is the significance of this pattern? Well, in each of those equations, those numbers that we just found, if I was just looking at this equation and describing it, like, what does the 7 mean in that equation? What do we call the 7? Yep, that's the slope. And so notice that we talked at first about how we know that the difference quotient gives us the slope of the secant line. When I'm finding this limit as h is approaching 0, it is still telling us a slope. It's just what slope did it tell us? Because, of course, each of these are linear, right? So the slope throughout it is always going to be the same. Well, let's take a look at something a little bit less linear then to actually be able to nail that down a little. Here's a fun equation. No, you won't be making this one yourself by hand. Um, and here I've shown, uh, I got some point at x equals 3, and I just chose x equals 3 to be kind of the point that we had used to look at here. So the difference quotient, again, what does the difference quotient tell us in the, about the situation? Yes, the slope of the secant line. So like, if I was, say, going from this point over here, it would tell me the slope of the line going through those two points. Okay, great. But then let's use the same graph to think about. What is h approaches 0 is it telling us? So like I started by drawing this point here, and we could see, OK, the line goes through there. But what if I move it a little bit closer? The line's going through there. Or I can move it a little bit closer even than that. So then the line's going through there. What's happening 
as h is approaching zero here. And I'm actually going to even go over and do another visualization out of this here to maybe help us. So as we saw there, basically as h is getting close to zero, our line, our secant line that we're drawing in, is getting closer and closer to the tangent line to the curve at that point. So then what this can tell us then is that this formula up here where we find the limit as h approaches zero of the difference quotient, that's no longer the slope of the secant line, that's the slope of the tangent line. And so then we're able to figure out what is the slope at this specific point. Rather than always having to go between two points, we can actually figure out what the slope is at a point. Now this is such a big concept and such a big theme in this class especially of calculus that it has its own name. In fact, this is going to be a very familiar name to you. This is kind of the biggest day of this entire class where you first learn what the definition of a derivative is. Because that is the derivative. Please add this into your notes. And so you have this down to your notes. Now, just to be really explicit about a few of the things that you wrote down in there, uh, first of all, this is the technical definition about what's happening with derivative and how we find it. It's the slope of the secant line as the distance between the two points of the secant line gets closer to zero. And notice that this is only going to be valid, of course, if the limit actually exists. If this limit doesn't exist, we're not going to be able to do it. Uh, now, notice how we read this notation. We have that little asterisk between the f and the parentheses. We read that as prime. So this is read as f prime of a. Anytime you see f prime of a when we're just dealing with functions and all that, you can bet it's talking about the derivative of the function. And so then the other thing to remember, and this is kind of one of those big themes of the whole class, is the whole point of finding derivatives is to find the slope of the tangent line. It sounds like a very simple kind of thing is, wait, this whole class is about finding slope of tangent line? And yes, it is. It's just that slope of the tangent line, once we can find that, that allows us to find all sorts of other things. Because the slope of the tangent line is the rate of change of our function at any instant. And so you can find out how quickly something is changing at all sorts of different times that you wouldn't have been able to find otherwise. Yes, I think I said even asterisk earlier for that symbol. It's not asterisk, it's apostrophe. Just get my words all twisted up there. Now we're going to practice finding some derivatives. And so we're going to find the derivative equation for this function first. So please write down the equation and then go ahead and find the derivative of it. The first thing you do is plug it into the difference quotient. Keep the limit as h approaches 0 written next to the difference quotient until you actually plug that 0 in. And then simplify from there. And so I've worked it through. I've simplified it. And notice that I actually had to simplify this before I did the direct substitution part. If I tried plugging in 0 for h anywhere up here, I would have been dividing by 0, right? But notice that since the h is canceled out in this step, I now have something where it's no longer going to cause me to divide by 0. That's why I wait until this point to go ahead and put the 0 in for h. But since I've gotten here, I now plug 0 in for h. And so 2x plus 0 is just going to be 2x. There is our derivative equation. So the derivative, then, of x squared is 2x, which is actually kind of cool information to know, because that now allows us to find the slope of the tangent line very quickly, very easily, at any point on the parabola x squared. And so to practice that idea, please find the slope of the tangent line at each of these four points. And so notice we can actually find the slopes of each of those tangent lines by just plugging into our derivative function. So I'm doing f prime of 0, f prime of 3, 10, negative 5, and just figuring out what each of those are. So like if I was looking at this graph 
of f of x equals x squared, a very familiar kind of graph, so that's a good one to start with for this sort of thing. If I can actually get it to look right, there we go, that's a bit better. Uh, I can actually figure out at any given point along that just how steep is the graph at that point. And so we're able to figure out how quickly is it going up or going down. And also notice one other thing here. Notice what it was doing at the vertex there. Our vertex here is at zero. And of course, then the slope is zero. And so again, it's matching up with what our expectations and previous knowledge would tell us, which is always a good place to start. And it's just seeing that, yes, that is actually verifying that. Always good when it works out, right? And so now we're going to continue with these ideas. Now going on to something that's maybe a little bit more interesting to actually do. Please find the derivative equation of this function of g of x. All right, so we plugged in and we ended up with this, which at first does not look very encouraging because right now I don't see any nice easy way that I can simplify it as it currently is. But there is a way I can manipulate it. Remember when we were learning all those different ways that we could find limits algebraically? One of those methods is specifically geared towards this type of function. Yep. Remember how we saw that when we have those square roots in there, we can multiply by the conjugate. So multiply top and bottom of your fraction then by the conjugate. All right, so when I've worked it through and multiplied by that conjugate, notice the big idea there was that those H's did end up canceling. And so having those H's canceled out, I now end up with a situation where I can try plugging the H approaching zero in. So now let's actually go ahead and do that and plug the zero in for H to see what that gives us. So I end up with one over square root of, well, x plus 0, of course x plus 0, and that's just x, so let's make that a little bit simpler there. That's going to be square root of x plus the square root of x. Well, we can simplify that down, right? Because root x plus root x is 2 root x. There is a nice, simple little equation. Now, it's true, we could go ahead and work on rationalize the, the denominator here, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. I just want to go ahead and leave it like this, so here's our derivative. That means that this is what g prime of x equals. So we found our derivative, and yes, even when it's not f, even when it's called g, we go g prime to represent the derivative there. So now that we've figured out what g of x is, or g prime of x, uh, please use that to find the slope of the tangent line at each of these four points. All right, so when I plug those values back into my derivative function now, uh, g prime of one gives me a half. So I know that if I'm looking at the square root function, of course you should be able to still visualize square root functions so you kind of see where we're looking at here, uh, at one, we got a slope of one half. As we go out to four, our slope is one fourth because of course, remember this graph is kind of leveling out. So we'd expect these slopes to be getting closer and closer to zero. And so that's why even if we get out to a hundred, we see that it's at one twentieth. But what's happening at zero? Well, I could actually try plugging it in as I'm guessing most of you did there. And you'd end up with one over two times zero. And of course, two times zero is zero. Can I do one divided by zero? No, we can't do one divided by zero. And so what's happening there? Well, remember that our derivative works as the limit approach of, let's say restart, the limit as h approaches zero as long as that exists. But if I'm looking at a square root function, I'm looking at zero. Notice the limit from the right exists at that point, but not from the left. Therefore, the limit at zero does not exist. Hence why you end up with one of these situations where you're dividing by zero. Therefore, the derivative here, it does not exist. There is no derivative actually at 
zero. So this will be the last one where we find the derivative together. Again, going back to another one of those old ways of finding a limit algebraically. Go ahead and find our derivative here, please. And so you can see our original setup here, but this does bring us back to another one of those methods for how do I find the limit algebraically here, because I don't see anything right away that I can simplify or cancel. But I can, again, manipulate it in order to make this work. Ah, yes, thank you. I wrote a plus there when I should have written a minus. Good. But still, the question is, what do I do with this? Yep, this is the one where we combine the fractions. So in this case, what that means is that you're actually going to do that subtraction on the top, which means getting a common denominator and then subtracting. So go ahead and do that from there. Now, in getting to this point, make sure that you remember that when you're doing that subtraction up here, you did x minus x, and then you did no h is minus h, which is why this is a negative h on the top up here. Don't want to lose track of that negative sign there. And so we go ahead and we cancel out those h's, and we have negative 1 over x times x plus h. It looks like we now are at a point. Now that we canceled out some h's, that we can try actually doing the substitution. So we now try plugging the h equals zero into that to see what it gives us. And so when you simplify it all down, you do end up with a nice simple equation, a negative one over x squared. And again, what does that tell us? That is the derivative of h. So we figured out that h prime of x equals a negative <coughs> one over x squared. And we again have a nice tidy little function that can be used to find the slope of the tangent line at any given point that exists of this function. And like the other ones, I'd like you to now practice this by using that information. Please find the slope of the tangent line at each of these four points. And so when we work that through, uh, pay attention to your signs. Uh, make sure you want to put parentheses around the number you plug in, especially in the case where you're plugging in that negative. Otherwise, you might think that squaring it gives you a negative 4 instead of the positive 4. We don't want to fall into that accident. But the last one, again, if I plug 0 in for x in that one, I'm going to end up with 1 over 0. And again, we can't divide by 0. And so this one is another one that does not exist. It's undefined. Why? Well, what's happening at 0 in this case? If I graph this original equation, what's happening at 0? There's an asymptote there. And so because there's an asymptote there, that derivative, that limit as x is approaching 0, it does not exist. 